So, you know, it's funny, guys, gals, and, and thank you for checking in on our, on our channel. Um, I'm always getting asked the question about rich people on life insurance, rich people on life insurance. And listen, I don't know why that's the case. I don't know how it's marketed over the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years on how come that seems to be the status quo thinking. But here's in today's video, what we're going to talk about are the five reasons the rich use life insurance to build wealth. And for us to take it a step further, what we're going to really get into is how we could take that DNA, that DNA mindset, and bring it to every single person that either comes in front of us or listens to this video. So as we get into the first part, and it's important to understand that, you know, when you look at the cash value inside the life insurance, you have a bunch of different components. One is cash value. Another one is the dividends, right? So on the first part of the five things we're going to discuss is how, in fact, is the money protected with a guarantee? So whenever you look at a life insurance contract, remember, when you're playing in the space of life insurance, it's not an investment, and it's by state law. So each state law is different, and in writing in this contract, they are the ones that put in writing basically what the guarantee is. Usually two, sometimes three or 4%. If it's an older policy, 7702 kicked in, so that number is now 2%. This doesn't include the dividend, but that's just the guarantee in writing. And whenever you look at an illustration, you'll see a guaranteed column, and then you'll see a non-guaranteed column, and the non-guaranteed column is gonna factor in if in fact you include the dividend, and I'll get to that in two second. So, you know, when you look at understanding how you could guarantee the growth of your money, once again, the insurance carriers that are out there today, you know, these companies, if you look at, let's call it the Fab Four, um, the mutuals that are out there, and you guys could do your own research, but the ones that have been around since 1850 and 1860, they have a, a whole bunch of money in there. They don't carry any debt. And the way they pay dividends is, or the way they guarantee it, is based on their projections of investments, not only what they've done in the past and what they're doing going forward. And then they'll factor in what the company's sales are, uh, what, what, what that looks like from an interest rate perspective on some of the investments that they, in fact, put the money into. Okay, so um, as we understand where the guarantee comes, the guarantee is as good as the guarantor. Uh, they have much better and stronger rules than, let's say, what the banks are. I believe the banks will, will FDIC, give you protection up to 250000 But when we really take a look deeper into the space of the life insurance and the guarantee, uh, it's tied to state law by contract and by insured, uh, by, by the insurance carrier. Okay, so now as we go into the third point that we're going to get into today, and we really kind of dig deep into the policy we factor in the guaranteed cash value, and now there's a dividend, right? So if you look at, um, you know, once again, some of these mutual carriers that have been around since 1850, these companies haven't missed a dividend payment. Uh, and go do the research yourself. I can't name the companies for the purposes of advertisement, so I don't, I don't want to mention any company's name in particular, but there's four of them, and they've been around for a long time. And whether it's been uh, the Spanish-American War, um, the Civil War, actually the Spanish-American War, World War I, the Roaring Twenties, World War II, um, you know, the, the uh, high interest rates of the early 60s after the Korean War, they all paid dividends straight through. Um, if you look at the early 80s, hyperinflation or high, high interest rate, they paid dividends. If you look at um, 1987 stock market crash, as well as the 1973 stock market crash, they pay dividends. And then you fast forward to the first ground war in Iraq in 1990, they pay dividends. And stay with me, folks, this is important because I'm taking you through a timeline of 170-year history of the economics that we've seen, I'd say, in America in the most recent three or four generations, whether it was the second war in Iraq, whether it was the Asian contagion, whether it was 9-11, whether it was the Great Recession, or whether it was COVID, these companies pay dividends, right? So now the question is, okay, Rob, if if I'm if my if my if I get a guaranteed cash value and a dividend, how is it tax free? Well, here's the game, and here's the understanding, and this is why it's important to make sure that you connect your accountant to your fiduciary to your insurance agent. Whenever you fund the policy, it's it's under the FIFO method of taxation, first in, first out. So let's say, for example, I put a million dollars into a life insurance policy, and and in the twelfth year, it's worth. A, I'm just giving. This is just a 
a hypothetical situation, the cash value was $1.3 million. All of that money is not tax-free. However, that first million that I draw out is tax-free, and then the other 300000 which is on top of the basis, that first million, if I withdraw it, would be taxed at ordinary income. However, if I do policy loans against it, I'll be able to maintain my tax-free status. That's an important piece that you understand this because you'll get a lot of agents running around saying, there's guarantees and it's tax-free. Okay, yeah, in general terms, it's it's guaranteed and it's tax advantaged. Language is everything, folks. So it's important that you understand that. And, and as you're listening to this video, and if you're still sticking with me, thank you so much. Go ahead and click the link below. Also hit the subscribe button. And in clicking the link, if you have any questions, pick a time for one of the agents to get back to you and be able to answer any questions you may have, because that's important to be able to kind of take you through the success process. And understand we're not here bringing cookie cutter strategies. Our goal and mindset is to bring customized plan that is designed towards whatever your investment philosophy is. And then as we get into the fourth uh, reason why the rich buy life insurance, we're now going to talk about how do you structurally uh, put the policy together. So so here's, here's the language we use. We have what we call the baseline savings and or what the premium is on a baseline uh, monthly component or monthly savings that you could put into the strategy. And once again, this has to sit and fit with um, your financial underwriting, your health underwriting, understanding your goals and objectives, where you at in the wealth accumulation phase. In other words, where are you during the working years? And as we put that together, we also have an unscheduled feature, which is what we like to call a dump it. In other words, you have the baseline premium, which is the savings, and then you have the, the unscheduled dump in. And once again, you want to stay within the policies uh, illustration and make sure you don't mech it because if you mech it, it becomes taxable and the software will protect against that. But as you dump money in there, this is money with certain carriers that you have access to uh, either 21, if not 30, 40 days later, for example. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you have uh, a baseline savings of $1,000 a month, but you also want to dump in $50,000. You can make your first payment for $1,000. You could then maybe a week or two later dump in that fifty, dollars and then 30 days later leverage that fifty dollars out. Okay, so, so when we talk about to make sure your policy is structured the right way, what I just described is for the folks that are interested in really being able to create strategies where they can get multiple uses of money by using it for alternative investments. This is not a traditional way of just doing a life insurance, putting into it for 20 or 30 years, and then maybe taking income off of it later on, or at least having a, a fully paid up policy with cash. Those are two different things. And once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions below. But if you want to make an appointment, go ahead and click the link and somebody will get back to you. And then the last step, and once again, I said I'd go over five different things, uh, when it come, or five different reasons why the rich buy life insurance, which doesn't have to be the rich anymore. It could be you, me, anybody else, because because listen, rich is a mindset. I grew up middle class. I grew up in Bayonne, New Jersey. Um, yeah, I don't remember a lot of people talking about life insurance. I do remember people non-judgment talking a lot about becoming a fireman or a cop or um, you know maybe a, a construction, all very good jobs and very, very necessary. Only a certain few really talked about becoming doctors and lawyers. And um, when I look at my neighborhood, I think there may be one lawyer, at least that I know of. A um, couple of jail sentences and definitely some salespeople, uh, school teachers, cops, and firemen. Anyway, with that being said, how do you access your money inside your policy? Well, very simply, um, if you have a very good relationship with your agent, remember, if you're going to call the 1-800 number at the insurance company, it's going to take you a lot longer than if you have a good relationship with your agent, who in fact can be the conduit and make sure your speed to receiving policy loans would anywhere be between, let's say, two to four business days if it's done the right way. Much longer conversation, so it's important that uh, if you really want to dig into any of these five points that I brought up, go ahead for the last time and click that link below. Uh, one of the team members will get back to you and be able to share that information. And last but not least, folks, I want to thank you so much um, for really paying attention to us listening to what we're doing because every single day we are dropping educational information for you based on the lack of knowledge that we had when we were in our 20s and 30s, right? Or, or when I was a teenager and my parents didn't have this education. So it's really important for us and for you to know that our motive and our intention is to provide that value. Once again, thank you for checking us out. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the future.